Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and I post tutorials here on my channel to help sewers of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. This week I'll be showing how to make Butterick 6094. This is a Patterns by Gertie design and I'll be showing how to make view B. I already did a mock-up of this dress to make sure that the fit was right and that I understood all of the patterns instructions. You can find the mock-up vlog linked down below in the description box. Now let's get on to this tutorial. I started off by making a list of what pattern pieces needed to be cut from each fabric since I am adding a contrasting section in the middle um, just to break up the design a little bit and also so I wouldn't have to match up too many vertical stripes. So I did do a little sketch and made a list and that just helped me while I was cutting out my pattern pieces to make sure I was keeping everything straight and um, not cutting things out of the wrong material. Now onto the sewing. Use a washable marking pen to connect the dart markings on the bodice front piece. Fold right sides together so the dart markings match up. pins and sew straight along the marked line. Repeat for both front darts, then trim the seam allowance and press toward the center. Line the bodice back pieces up with the front and attach with a 5 8 inch seam allowance along the side. This is the seam allowance that will be used for the entire project. Sew a stay stitch along the bottom edge. This is just a row of stitching inside the seam allowance that keeps your fabric from stretching or warping as you're working with it. Also reinforce the indented corners of the back and clip to the stitching line. Place the midriff front and back pieces right sides together lining up the side edges. Sew to attach the three together. Line the midriff piece up with the bottom edge of the bodice right sides together. Match up the seams and notches and clip the two layers together. Then sew. Sew the darts on the lining and stitch the front to the backs and stay stitch along the bottom edge the same as with the outer. Now grab the facing pieces and sew the back facing to the front along the sides. At this point I'm going to stray from the pattern directions just a little bit because I'm trying out some different finishing techniques. So for this project I wanted to finish all the raw edges with bias binding. So the pattern says to turn the bottom edge of the facing in toward the wrong side but instead I trimmed off the 5 8 inch seam allowance and simply bound the bottom edge with some bias tape. Then match the lining and facing up along the edges so the pretty sides of both are facing up. Clip together and sew along the sides and top inside the seam allowance and along the bottom edge of the facing. Sew the three midriff pieces together the same as with the outer. If you're following the directions, turn the bottom edge up, but I trimmed mine off and added bias binding to the raw edge. Press the shoulder edges of the lining toward the wrong side and trim to 3 8 inch. Sew the midriff section to the bodice lining. You should have a bodice lining that looks like this and the outer bodice that looks like this. Lay the two bodice pieces right sides together lining up all the edges. 
clip them in place. By the way, I have an Amazon link down below where you can find the craft clips I'm using and some of my other favorite sewing supplies. And anything purchased through that link does go to help future Whitney Sews tutorials. Then sew the two together along the back edges from the notch to the shoulder, around the arm openings, and the neckline. Leave the shoulders and everything below the notches in the back open. So at this point I did miss one word in the directions and that was trim. And what the pattern means is to trim the seam allowance around the neckline and the arm openings before moving on to the next step. And unfortunately, I did miss this when I was making my dress and um, I didn't catch it until it was too late. And I wish I had realized earlier because it definitely is noticeable that I didn't trim the seam allowance. It's a little bit bulkier in that area. So please learn from my mistake. And at this point, you want to trim down the seam allowance around the neckline and the arm openings. Then under stitch the neck and arm openings. This means to carefully sew the lining to the seam allowance to hold the lining and seam allowance in place and help everything look nice from the outside without any visible stitching. Turn the bodice right sides out and press. Line up the shoulder edges and sew across only stitching through the outer fabrics and keeping the facings free. Tuck the seam allowances between the layers at the shoulder and slip stitch the folded edges together. It will then be nicely finished inside and outside at the shoulders. Now it's time to move on to the skirt part of the dress. I used a ruler to connect the dart markings and folded so the drawn lines match up. Add a few pins, then sew directly along the marked lines. Press the darts toward the center. Also went ahead and added bias binding to all the side edges of the skirt pieces. Lay the skirt front and back pieces right sides together lining up the edges. Sew up both sides. Then line up the bodice outer layer with the skirt matching up the seams and edges. Make sure to keep the lining out of the way because we are not sewing it down in this step. Clip them together and sew. With the lining still flipped up out of the way, add an invisible zipper to the back opening. I'm still really new to invisible zippers and ended up having to sew mine in twice before it looked okay. So you'll want to find a separate tutorial if you need help with yours. Then sew the back together from the end of the zipper to the circle marking just above the slit opening. Now it's time to flip the bodice lining back down. Turn it in along the edges of the zipper so the raw edges are tucked between the layers and use a slip stitch to sew it in place. Also, hand sew the bottom edge of the bodice lining to the seam allowance to hold it in place. I made sure my stitches just barely caught the edge of the seam allowance of the outer layer 
so none of the stitches show on the outside. My dress was exactly the length I wanted at this point, so I used a piece of wide bias tape to hem the bottom. I sewed the tape to the bottom edge right along the fold line, then flipped it to the inside, pressed, and hand sewed it in place with a cross stitch, only taking a very small stitch each time so the stitches aren't noticeable from the outside. Flip back the edges of the slit and hand sew them in place as well. Lastly, try on the dress and make sure the back facing is flipped over nicely. Pen where the buttons need to be placed and sew them on. Trust me on trying the dress on and penning the facing before sewing the buttons on. I didn't do it the first time and it didn't lay right so I had to take off the buttons and redo that part. I absolutely love how my dress turned out even though my zipper isn't perfect and I miss trimming the seam allowances around the neck and arm openings. I still really really like it. I wore it to church and got several compliments on it. I'm actually planning to do a vintage inspired photo shoot soon. Um, I have some plans for that and I can't wait to do the photo shoot and share the pictures. I'll be sharing some on my Facebook and my Instagram so make sure you're following me on one of those. And if you make a dress using this pattern, I would love for you to tag me in the picture so I can see it. I have several other vintage clothing inspired videos coming up as well as lots of other types of sewing tutorials. So make sure you're subscribed by clicking my picture right down there if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on those videos. And until next time, happy sewing.